So you want to reach the finals and get that money? Well, you got to have the right outfit first. If you don't got the right drip, what's the point? Then you got to pick your size. And once you're ready to go in, it's time to get that mo Whoa, whoa, what the heck? Why are there so many explosions? What? Oh my God. Oh, oh my, it's so bad. Oh, I'm on fire. It's destroying the green screen. What the heck? Oh my God. Oh, oh. Hey, hey. Okay. Hey. Yo, this, that, quarter life, crisis of a borderline, trauma that control my life, more than I control my life. Damn near mortified. I just got demoralized. The Finals is a new first-person shooter developed by the indie company Embark Studios, which is comprised of a bunch of ex-DICE developers. So if you think this game feels like Battlefield, it's because it kind of does. It's a little difficult to accurately categorize this game as it's kind of its own thing, but to put it simply, it's a class-based heist game. Don't worry, I'll explain. I mean, I always do. Come on. It's me. Four teams of three go into an arena and are all trying to secure a vault full of cash to then transport to a cash out station to cash out. This process repeats until time runs out and the team with the most money at the end wins. You'll earn a little bit of cash for opening the vaults and some cash for being the ones to put it in the cash out station. But the big amounts of money won't be awarded to your team until the cash out timer finishes, which means it can be stolen. That's where the teamwork really comes into play. Your team needs to hold down the cash out station by preparing defenses, or if your team isn't in control of one, you have to push a team and try to steal it. So either your team successfully gets rich or dies trying. If you die, you can be revived by your teammates, or you can wait 20 seconds and use one of your respawn tokens to get back in. However, these tokens are limited, so once you're out of tokens, no more regular respawning for your team. If your whole team is wiped out, then your whole team will be revived after 20 seconds. Ugh, this takes forever. Any day now. Finally! So, uh, don't die, you noob. What really sets this game apart is that almost everything can be blown up. So if an objective is on the third floor, it doesn't have to be. You can blow up the floor below it, and now it's on the second floor. The cash out station has its own weird physics, so it can move around a ton, which can lead to some hilarious steals. The cash out's out, though! The cash out's out to steal it! Oh my god! You got this, you got this! Oh my god! There's no way! I got it. I did say that this is a class-based first-person shooter, so let's talk about... There's three classes in this game, light, medium, and heavy. The only real distinction they have aesthetically is their size, so you can make them all look the same. One will look like a child, and the other will be like Shrek. But when it comes to how they play, it's drastically different. Every character can carry one gun, three items in their inventory, and one main ability. Between the three of them, there are shared abilities like frag grenades and incendiary grenades, but most of them are unique to their class. The light class is fast, with tons of movement abilities, like a grapple or a dash, and even even the ability to go invisible. I'm going ghost! You can be small with an Uzi, a sniper, or even a knife. You can just go around and give people the stabby stab. It's like you're on Scream 6. Wait, is that me? Uh, the lights do a ton of damage, but have a little bit of health. So they're like glass cannons. They will be the best at securing kills and escaping. But the moment they're caught in the open, they can be picked off with ease. So use the lights wisely. The medium class is my personal favorite and my main in this game. They have average speed and health, but they make up for it in their utility. You can be armed with a revolver, an AK, or even a grenade launcher, and your damage isn't anything to scoff at. But where mediums really shine is their abilities. Mediums can make zip lines for their teams to traverse the map or kill their team with bad placements. Up the right tree, cash out I die, don't take it. I'm sorry. <laughs> they can also make jump pads as well. You can be Pathfinder or Octane or both. The mediums are so important for moving a team around the verticality of these maps because these maps are pretty vertical. On top of that, they have grenades that scan enemies. Honestly, it makes it a little bit hard to see. And they have the ability to make turrets like Torbjorn, but somehow more annoying. Build them up, break them down. 
break them, break them, break, 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 break. The medium also uses a defib a, defi a defibrillator. Oh my god. They can instantly revive. It's kind of nuts. And they can heal like mercy, but also somehow more annoying. Seriously, a medium pocketing a heavy can feel like an unstoppable combo. Trust me. Speaking of which, the final class is the heavy class. Heavies are huge and their health reflects that. They are armed with an LMG, flamethrower, or even a freaking sledgehammer. They are a little slow with no movement abilities, but they're the ones that can blow up everything, everywhere, all at once. You need to get to an objective? Just blow up the wall with the C4. Is the objective high up? Fine, blow the floor below it. Here we go, catch us down, catch us down. Nice! I'm stealing, I'm going for it, I'm going for it. It's ours, it's ours, it's ours! And these explosives do tons of damage to enemies as well. The RPG is an instant kill on a cooldown. The C4 can lead to some hilariously cheeky kills. Boundless are opening a vault. And just burning whole teams alive with a flamethrower is just such a fun time. The heavies also come equipped with a ton of defensive shielding. They have a Gibby Bubble Dome, or even a Reinhardt Shield. For the first time ever, a game copied both Apex and Overwatch at the same time! I'm so proud. There's a ton more things that each of these classes can do, but that's the basic idea for each. So once you find the one that fits your playstyle, go in and get that money, son! The finals is in its beta right now, so there are only two maps, but they do come with a ton of variants. The two maps are Monaco, a European town with old school architecture and tons of rooftops to fight on, and Seoul, where you play on top of these huge high rises with multiple floors and places to fall off. Devastating. These maps can occur during the day, at night, with fog, with extra obstacles that can be added or removed completely, and the cash out boxes change depending on the different variants of the map. But for the most part, it's just two maps. And there's only two ways to play this game at the moment. Quick play, which is just one round and no stakes really, and Tournament, the true way to play the finals. The tournament is simple. 16 teams go in and are paired into groups of four teams. The top two teams in each group will advance to the next round. Then that repeats until there's only two final teams left. These two final teams will duke it out in a 1v1 heist. And if you make it to the end, you win the finals and are a finalist. Congrats! What do you get? Uh, a higher rank? That's it. And then you can do it all over again. So that's the game in a nutshell. And don't get me wrong, there's a little bit more to cover, but don't worry, I will go over all of it in the... The graphics are pretty good. The maps look nice, especially during the day. I like the way the game plays. It's a very unique game mode that I haven't seen before, which is refreshing. The whole vibe is just fun. Just look at this intro. so clean. The game comes complete with these goofy announcers saying stuff about your team. Impressive steal by the powerhouses. In the beginning of every match, you're randomly assigned a team name, and the announcers will announce what the other teams are doing, which kind of gives you important information, so pay attention to that. There will also be these big events that happen randomly, and some of them make the game crazy, like low gravity, while others are a little more annoying, like death goes boom. That one's not fun. Hmm. That reminds me of another game. The cosmetics aren't priced that badly and are very customizable. They fit all of your classes and you can change just about everything from your head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Even the bundles aren't forcing you to use the whole thing. You can mix and match with ease and make some really funky looking people. Prices seem pretty fair at the moment, but it is the beta, so who knows how it'll actually be in terms of pricing. Embark? Don't make the same mistakes these other studios make, okay? The different strategies that you can use to approach the objective is also awesome to see. You can use brute force and blow everything up, or play campy, or stealthy, whatever works best for your team. And the fact that your team is not locked to one type of role is also really nice. The combinations are endless, and the constant ability to move around like crazy, it makes me happy. It reminds me of Hyperscape. <laughs> I miss you, buddy. The developers are constantly updating the game, so some of the stuff I said in this video might have already changed, which is a good thing. Having developers that care is a huge deal. A lot of these cons may not be cons in the near future, which is what I hope. 
they desperately need to add more maps. Hopefully when the game fully launches, it comes with at least two more maps. And during the tournament, it's the same map four times in a row. Sure, they add fog or make it night, but why not just swap between the maps? What also sucks is that you can't swap weapons at all during the match. Why? No, seriously, I don't understand why. I'm talking like a simple swap when we're team wiped or something. It wouldn't really be game breaking at all to just swap things around. And it's even more frustrating because this game is so horribly balanced. Some abilities have little to no counterplay at all or are just straight up tedious to deal with. Why do games insist on turrets? They have never been fun. Except you, buddy, you're good. There's even some cash out stations on parts of the maps that are impossible to contest in some scenarios, like the unbreakable elevators that you can keep moving up and down and up and down. Here's an idea. Don't put cash outs in unbreakable areas. Also, there's just way too many items that you can use. You get bombarded with thousands of nades and bombs, so you don't even really get to play the game sometimes. I think giving every character one less inventory slot would benefit the game drastically, while also changing up how people would play for the better. It becomes more about your individual skill and less about I have nade and you don't. But honestly, I could forgive a bunch of this overpowered stuff if the game just felt fluid, but it doesn't. The movement is so clunky, sliding and mantling, they just don't feel as nice as other games. Pair that with some mediocre gunplay and plenty of bugs, and you have a gameplay experience that can sometimes be really fun, but a lot of the times, it's disappointing. I mean, you only have iron sights for these weapons in 2023? Come on! Man, Apex has spoiled us. When the game first started, there were some really fun glitches like prop surfing and zipline jumping, but they decided to patch those out, which is fun but I feel like this game could have benefited from having these kind of gimmicky and silly movement mechanics implemented in a more natural way where it's not like game breaking. But either way, the footage of it is hilarious. Shout out Moki Sniper for the footage. You should check him out. Love the guy. Mwah. Also on a more cosmetic side, you kind of have to wear a mask because oh my god, these default character models are ugly as fuck. Overall, I really like this game, in concept. In execution, it's just okay. I get it though, they're indie developers and it's in its beta, so time will tell if they can fix all their issues, but I don't think that they can really make the game feel as good as other AAA shooters do. I do hope that this game ends up thriving upon release, or at least the idea that this game made of the money heist mode gets absorbed by Apex Legends or Warzone because the core idea is so fun and I want more of it, but the actual gunplay and movement leaves a lot to be desired. I mean, just imagine this finals game mode in Apex. It could be so cool. So I'll be giving the finals a 7.5 out of 10. If the movement and gunplay felt more fluid, I think there is a solid game hidden in here. But as it stands, it could use a lot of work. But what do you think? Were you able to get into the finals beta before it closed? And if you didn't get in, are you excited to try it when it fully releases? Which I don't know when it is, I'm sorry, I'm not the freaking developer. Let me know in the comments down below. Okay guys, my green screen caught on fire, so I gotta buy a new one. So uh, I'll catch you later. Ya noob!